Grutas de Tolontongo is a natural park nestled in the mountains of Hidalgo, Mexico. It is one of the most beautiful places I've ever visited, and despite its popularity with people in nearby Mexico City, there is very little tourist information about this unforgettable destination. After traveling thousands of miles and not knowing if we could even enter the park given the vague information on their Spanish-only website, I'm here to guide you to one of the greatest hot springs in the world. This is everything you need to know about Grutas Tolontongo. <laughs> In this video, I'll be going over some of the basic info that I felt like was missing from the official website for Grutas Tolentongo, as well as information I would have liked to have had before my first time going on the trip. Each of the sections are timestamped in the description for your reference later on. We're gonna be going over supplies, how to get there, prices, hotel and camping information, the park map, what time of day is best for each spot, as well as deeper explanations into the gear that you're gonna need, where to take the best photos, and what equipment to use. We didn't get to do all the things that we wanted to on this trip, so hopefully after watching this, you guys will get to do the things that we missed out on, and you can let us know how they went. For your convenience, I made a list of all the things you might need and a list on Amazon. You can find it linked in the description below, and we'll talk about each of the items in further detail later on in the video. After visiting, I thought, wow, there must be a better way to get there. So the way that we got there was we flew into MEX, the Mexico City International Airport, and then we drove about four hours through like some farms and that kind of thing, and ended up at the place late at night, and I looked around and there actually are no closer airports. So unless you're flying private, MEX is the best airport to fly into. The airport has a few car rental agencies just like any other airport would, but the booking was messed up when we got there, so it took us an extra three hours to finally leave the airport with two cars instead of one. And one thing that you need to know about renting a car in Mexico is that they require insurance before you can take the car out, and they charge a lot more than what the list price looks like when you're booking online, so it's something important to keep in mind when you're booking a rental car in Mexico. I haven't figured out a way to get around this yet, so I don't know, good luck. The drive is quite peaceful and it reminded me of driving from LA to San Francisco in California. You're surrounded by farms and there's plenty of places to stop for food and gas. Before you get to the park though, be sure to have enough cash to last you for your entire stay because they only take cash in the whole park and I don't remember seeing any ATMs there. Everything is really cheap, so you won't need that much. One thing that surprised us though, is when you get close to the park, you're required to go through this sanitation gate. It's nothing crazy, but the girls were all worried about getting out of the car, leaving the car parked, all that stuff. But honestly, the whole drive was super safe, so you have nothing to worry about. Finally, just like finding tourist information before you go, finding a fluent English speaker once you get to the park is gonna be very difficult. So I recommend practicing some of the basic phrases that you might need, like necesito, Habitación, which means uh, I need a place to stay, or uh, dame porfa este, pointing to the menu, which means I would like this, uh, and you point to what you want. Just a few things like that will help you get by, and of course the park staff is super helpful and they won't mind if you mess up a little bit on your Spanish speaking. We could not believe how affordable everything in the park was. Some of the most beautiful Mexican food that I've ever had was coming out for like four or five dollars for a dish. And then Brittany got this like big plate of enchiladas and it was only a dollar fifty. They also had beers for only a dollar fifty and I couldn't even understand how they could get beer there and sell it for a dollar fifty and make profit off it. Like it just made no sense how insanely cheap everything was at this restaurant. The park entrance fee was only seven dollars and fifty cents per person per day, and then the parking pass, uh, I think, for the entire time that you're staying there, was only a dollar fifty. Finally, the hotel rooms were only between forty dollars and sixty dollars, and there might have been some for more, but I think it just is like if you need a huge room with like really big beds or something. But we got two rooms with two basic beds, and it was totally fine for us the mattresses were good enough uh, on cement slabs which was kind of weird but it's like 
You can't expect a luxury resort, although I think they are building one right now. So maybe by the time you get there, you'll be staying at a luxury resort in Grutas Tolentongo. One other thing that I didn't expect about the room was that there was no hot water. So not really such a big problem when you're staying at a place with all these wonderful hot springs. You're gonna feel clean, refreshed when you go in for the night anyways. But when we got there, we had just traveled and I was like all sweaty and gross from flying. And I was like, I have to shower. And then I want it to be hot because a little bit chilly at night. I go in and turn the water on, wait for it to heat up. And it just never does. There was only one uh, faucet turn thing. So there's no way to control the temperature. So hopefully you guys will get hot water when you're there or you won't need it. But I did not get any hot water. Before we went, I actually couldn't find this map. It might be somewhere online, but I couldn't find it. So anyway, I linked the file in the description. There are plenty when you get there, so you won't need to print it out. The map is also drawn with south pointing up, so keep that in mind if you wanna use this to figure out where the sun will be. The two main spots that you'll need to go to to get the best photos are the pools here and the cave slash waterfall here. There are a few other spots that could be interesting, but we didn't get to go to them and we will talk about them later on in the video. A universal trick, and this is gonna work anywhere in the world, to get the best lighting when you go somewhere is to go at sunrise. So most people like to sleep in, they don't like to get up early. So you can usually get to most places super early in the morning and you'll have it completely by yourself. So that was what we did. That's how we got this amazing, amazing content there with nobody around, or at least it looked like it. And so the park claims to open at 8 a.m. according to the website, but we were able to get through the front gate at around 7:10. That's all the way outside. We could have tried even earlier, but we didn't want to be stuck sitting around there for like two hours if the website was exactly correct. Which part of what inspired me to make this video is I wish someone would have told me how everything would go the morning that we got there. When we finally got to the pools, there was four other people lined up at the gate and the gate does a really good job of blocking off the pools. So some workers were in there cleaning and preparing the pools it looked like. And after only about 30 seconds of standing there at 7.30 AM, they opened the gate. It's hard to say if it was because we were all lined up or if that's because when they were ready or they just felt like opening them. Either way, if you want the best photos, you should get there right when the sun goes over the hill. The cave is almost completely blocked by the sun. We got there around 11 and the light had just barely began to hit the water on the waterfall. The beams of light cast were absolutely breathtaking and I'm glad we got there when we did, even though it was jam packed with people. If we had a second day, we would have tried to go back to the cave early in the morning to see if we could get it completely by ourselves, but it's hard to say if they block off access to it. It didn't seem like they had a gate as good as the one at the pools, but I have no idea. Oh, and one thing you absolutely must consider when booking your trip is that everyone that we talked to said that the day before on Sunday, it was absolutely jam packed with people. And we can attest to that. We saw hundreds of tour buses leaving the park as we were going in late at night. And so I imagine on weekends is absolutely crazy there. So you're going to want to go on a weekday. We went on Monday and it was pretty much empty. So that was really, really awesome. The pools here appear to be mostly man-made by rerouting spring water from higher on the hill into pools first made by laying brick then letting the sediment from the spring water form on them. It gives them a natural ancient look, but you can see more groups of them being developed in different areas of the park. The pools feel like the most perfect temperature bath, and since the water is running, it stays fresh forever. I could have stayed in them for hours even if I wasn't there to take photos. The cave is obviously very dark, and as mentioned before, it gets really crowded. At first, it didn't look interesting to me, just a cave with a pool under a waterfall, but once I went in and saw this massive geyser of water gushing down, all of it hot like shower water, I fully understood why so many people wanted to swim and play in this cave. Up some stairs and on the left, there's this dark tunnel that I couldn't go through because because I didn't have a light, but I would have loved to explore this area and see how deep it could have gone. Right next to the massive waterfall cave is this series of pools that are formed by the cascading water just naturally. And I think it's what the pools that we went to to take photos were based off of. And they have a more natural look like there's stuff growing in them like moss and, and trees and plants and stuff. And it really gives it this amazing atmosphere, which it may be hard to capture a photo there because of the angle of everything. But I think just being able to chill in this pool that was formed completely naturally and it has this beautiful temperature water would be so nice. 
There are a few restaurants in the park, but the one right next to our hotel was so good, that first meal that we had there, that we didn't bother looking for anywhere else. And as a matter of fact, like how I talked about how cheap it was, we got food for five people and everyone got like more than one thing. And the total for everyone was only $27. So I could not believe how cheap this restaurant is and how amazing the food was. There are tons of stores on the way in that try to sell floaties and water shoes. And if your feet are really soft, you may want the water shoes, but we were all fine just walking around in our flip flops and then taking them off when we would go swim. Like I mentioned before, there are very, very few fluent English speakers that work there. So you may want this uh, Spanish to English dictionary if you're not feeling super confident about speaking in Spanish. The park is also very proud that they have no Wi-Fi, So that's why I added this router just in case you need to connect a bunch of devices for whatever work you might need to do there. Having a GoPro or a waterproof phone case when you visit a place like this should just be standard. Like it's almost like a natural water park and a lot of people had those cheap lanyard plastic phone case thing but I think when you try to take photos and videos from that case it comes out like so bad that you wouldn't want to use the footage so I recommend using this phone case it's only a little bit more expensive and works a lot better or just bring a GoPro and one thing that I didn't think of that I saw there and I was like oh my gosh this guy is a genius uh, there was this guy at the waterfall inside of the cave that had a light that was waterproof for his GoPro and attached on the same stick. So he was able to shine light for his shot in the waterfall and it actually looked really, really good even though it was artificial light. So I'll definitely be bringing this GoPro light when I go next time because I want to have the shots like this and I just got lucky that he happened to shine it at me for a second while I was recording a selfie. One thing that was absolutely impossible to find online was the angle that the sun would be at when we try to shoot at the pools. And so we just got so lucky that when we went in the morning, we got there, the sun was just rising up over the hill. And so it poked through the valley and like shined on us. We got this amazing golden lighting. But if it was like sunset time that it does that, like we would have just been screwed because we only had one morning there. So just, so lucky that it worked out like that. You definitely want to be out in the morning. Like I already said, it's the best lighting. There's nobody there. You're also going to want to try to visit during the months of like February to April or September to November, because that's when the sun is going to be at the best angle, because as it becomes more summer, it's going to go further north and it'll take longer to get over the hill. And then when it finally shines on the pools, it's going to be a lot more white and a lot less golden. So really, really lucky that we got there right when the sun was at the bottom of that valley. Like we might have even been just on the best day of the year. Like, I don't know how we got so lucky to get such great lighting, but you can see it in these videos that uh, the sun was just coming over the hill as we rolled up so it was literally so perfect so to get this really epic vertical video that we did that we were trying to make go viral we saw a different viral video that was pretty much exactly the same we were like let's just go do that and do it better with better lighting and a better model and it'll go viral uh, we tried to play around with the angle of it and kind of lost some time here. So I'm just gonna tell you guys what the best angle is if you wanna film someone walking up these stairs like this, is you want to be right where the gate is on the outside. So super easy, like you can even set up before the gate opens and then find your shot and figure out exactly what focal length you wanna use. I think the best was like 50. Um, and then I ended up a little bit too close when I put the camera on 4K to get the video because it cropped in. So more than 50, probably too close. 24 looked too wide. It was like showing like the ground, this ugly light, like just a bunch of stuff that we didn't need to see. So. 35 to 50 probably the best or if you're just using your phone just put it on 2x and then you're boom golden so i thought of other stuff to say what not to bring uh like right after the trip when i wrote like some brief bullet points of what i was going to say for this video and then i have no idea what it was so if i remember it i'll add it to the comments or the description or something but one thing that you definitely shouldn't bring is a pet i am sure most of you are not traveling with a pet but if you happen to be traveling with a pet and want to go here they're not going to let you bring it in and I think it's something about like keeping the water pristine and so they don't want a lot of pets coming in. I, I don't know what their policy is on emotional support animals. I honestly wouldn't chance it, but I don't know how um, intense your relationship is with your animal. I don't know anything about service animals, uh, so try to give them a call, but 
As far as I could tell, calling them was completely useless. I was not able to call anyone but they do have a good connection on WhatsApp and their Facebook page. I was actually able to get a question answered. So if you have a question, send it to them on Facebook and they will actually help you pretty quickly. So finally, I'm not really the type of person to like make a video about tourist information or like how to do what somewhere. Like most of the places that I've been are like so obvious and overdone that like even when I went to them, like when I went to Greece, like everyone knew where Greece was with the blue dome buildings. Like that's nothing new to make a video about. But then this place was like, like it felt like we were going somewhere that only locals knew about, but then the locals there want it to be blown up because like, sure, the place gets busier, but they're doing so much expansion on this place that it seems like they want more and more people to come. I'm not afraid to recommend this to you guys. And by the way, like this is literally one of the coolest places that I've ever been, like photos or not, like you absolutely have to go here, add it to your bucket list, whether you are going to Mexico and looking for things to do there, or you are just looking for something to get away and relax for a little bit this is going to be the coolest place for you to go so at the end of the day visit Grutas Tolentongo you're going to love it so that's it guys thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video go down and sit, hit subscribe ring the bell it's the best way to make sure you get notified every single time I post a new video I mostly do videos about cleaning the ocean but if you guys let me know if this one does really well if you leave comments saying that you love this video um, I'd be happy to do more at some of the other destinations that we're going to be going to over the next couple months we've got a lot of travel plans um, and we're going to be going and doing some really really cool stuff so if I find things that I think need a video describing on how to get there I will describe it for you so that's it. That's all the stuff we saw. Bye. Wow. Right, you're gonna have to pee so much.